ceremony. My name is Professor Fiona Colson and I'm the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we're meeting here on Larrakia country, which always was and always will be Aboriginal land. I pay my respects to Elders past and present and extend that respect to all First Nations people here today. My job is to explain to you how today's ceremony will run. Firstly, you've got a few more minutes to send any urgent texts and then we will be asking you to switch off your mobile phone or at least to silent before the ceremony starts. Family and friends, we're delighted that you can be with us today. Um, we want you to celebrate the success of our wonderful graduates and we want you to cheer for all your worth. So um, please make some noise and celebrate as they come across the stage. We would ask that you keep children with you in your seats and keep the aisles clear. It is, if we need to evacuate the venue, we will use the exits located both at the front and the rear of the, the venue. If you hear an evacuation alert, please follow our venue staff for instructions. As the academic procession enters, you will hear the season's fanfare. It's a signature tune that was commissioned by the university for grand occasions such as this one. And it pays homage to Charles Darwin and maps a journey through the territory seasons and history. We hope you enjoy listening to it. Today, you'll also see the university mace and it'll get located down the front here. The mace bearer will immediately precede the chancellor in the academic procession and the mace will sit on stage. Charles Darwin University is committed to the achievement of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their communities across the Northern Territory in Australia. In recognition of this commitment, you will see our First Nations graduates at this ceremony wearing a unique stole or pin. The stoles are based on the designs and colours of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flags and it is practice that we've followed since inception by the Pro Vice Chancellor of Indigenous Leadership in 2009. Our photographers, you can see them now, will be busy taking pictures during the ceremony and you'll be able to have individual photographs taken after the ceremony. Please also take your own pictures and videos from wherever you're sitting. And this is a special occasion and we want you to uh, remember it for a long time to come. We do ask that there is no freelance photography allowed during this event. Freelance photographers will be requested to leave the venue. So now to the ceremony, what happens? The ceremony will be presided by the Acting Chancellor, Professor Hilary Winchester AM, and she will confer awards on graduating students during the ceremony. When the academic procession takes their place here on the stage, please remain standing for the national anthem. In the early part of the ceremony, the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman AO, will ask the graduates to stand and then ask the Chancellor to confer all of today's awards and at which point you, the audience, can cheer. Each graduate will then be individually called across the stage and presented. And today we have graduates from CDU TAFE and the Faculty of Arts and Society presented by Mike Hamilton. Now graduates, you pay an integral part of the ceremony and you'll have a starring role um, on stage. You'll be prompted to line up behind the scenes by one of our ushers, where you will receive your testimony before being presented to the Chancellor. When it's your turn, walk to the edge of the red carpet as directed and wait for your name to be called. When you hear your name, walk towards the Chancellor, acknowledge them by nodding, and if you're wearing a mortarboard or um, bonnet, touching the left side with your hand. Your tassel should be on the right side. Not checking. <laughs> this is the right side, guys. Yeah. Um, we won't shake hands today to stay COVID safe. And so when you reach the middle here, pause and stand next to the Chancellor and turn towards the photographer in the front row for the picture. Then follow the usher's directions to the next available seat in your row. Graduates and guests, please remain seated until this ceremony has finished. We want every graduate to have a full house, whether called first or last. And at, right at the end of the ceremony, you'll hear one of your fellow graduates address the auditorium. So no leaving early, it's worth the wait. 
At the end of the ceremony, the academic procession will form a guard of honour and graduands, you will be prompted by our ushers to exit the auditorium through the honour guard. After the ceremony, your guest ticket will give you access to light refreshments on the con concourse outside. Now, it gives me great pleasure to hand over to our alumni manager, Mr. David McBain, who will talk to you about staying connected to CDU. Thank you, Deputy Vice-Chancellor. Good morning, graduands, and congratulations on your graduation from Charles Darwin University. Graduating from university is one of life's great milestones. It is something to be celebrated, and I congratulate each and every one of you on your achievements. Once you walk out of these doors, you'll become alumni of Charles Darwin University something that we are so proud of and something that you can proudly say for the rest of your lives. You are leaving here with a qualification which will contribute greatly to your success in the future. But your connection with us doesn't end when you complete your study. As a graduate, we are here to support you through your career journey. Your knowledge, expertise and success can also be shared to help others, <coughs> help develop others, sorry, who in a few years' time will be sitting exactly where you are today. As alumni of CDU, you also have access to a range of special benefits. You can obtain free advice on all matters relating to your ongoing professional development through our virtual career centre. You have access to the libraries across our NT campuses and our online library resources, including leading e-journals and e-books. And you'll have free access to LinkedIn Learning, where you can access over 15,000 courses which are delivered in seven languages to help you continue developing a wide range of new skills anywhere and at any time. We'll keep you up to date with what's happening at CDU through our alumni e-news and social media pages, and you'll be invited to regular alumni networking events irrespective of where you live, including the CDU Alumni Awards, for which you're also now eligible for nomination. The CDU Alumni Awards have been designed to showcase our brightest stars, people who graduated from CDU and are using their knowledge and skills to do amazing things around the world. We celebrate them at a gala dinner which will be held at the Darwin Convention Centre in November. Nominations are still open and will close at the end of the month, so if you do know someone who you think is worthy of an award, please consider nominating them. Some of you might have noticed that I'm standing up here with a little crocodile that's dressed just like we are. This is Charlie. He's the latest member of CDU's alumni community. And I have one for each of you to collect from the alumni desk in the foyer after the ceremony. He's our gift to you, a small memento that will remind you of your time at CDU and that time that you stood here on this red carpet and had your photo taken as a graduate and a proud CDU alum. I encourage you to stay connected with us. It brings so many rewards and opportunities, and we would love to continue to hear about your future achievements and where your education with us has taken you. I know that this is a very exciting day and that some of you are quite nervous, which is why I don't expect you to remember much of what I'm saying right now. And I promise I'm wrapping up. In the coming days or weeks, though, when you've got a spare moment, please visit the alumni website Update your details so that we can keep in contact with you and check out the other offers that are available to you as alumni of Charles Darwin University. Congratulations again on your graduation. I'm so excited for you and I look forward to meeting each and every one of you at the alumni desk in the foyer at the conclusion of this ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, David. And just a reminder to please switch off your mobile phones. The ceremony is due to commence shortly. Welcome to Charles Darwin University Graduation. Congratulations on your achievement. Now you 
stand ready to create a new world of possibilities. This is your CDU graduation. Graduands, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession is about to commence. Please stand and remain standing until the national anthem has been sung. Worship the Mayor of Palmerston, Mrs. Athena Pascoe Bell, distinguished guests, graduates, family, and friends. To commence proceedings, I would like to invite Jerome Cabillo, Chair of the Larrakia Nation Board, to deliver the welcome to country. Uh, <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Chancellor, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> um, I would like to begin by giving a special shout out to all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander graduates in the room today. Some of you might be the first in your families to graduate today. What you have achieved is not only life changing, but will create change for generations to come. I think about our ancestors who have gone before us who weren't afforded the opportunities that we have been afforded today. I think of the stolen generations, and I think of the individuals who had their wages stolen. You stand on the, just the shoulders of giants today, and of those who went before us. 
you are their wildest dreams. So I would like to make, uh, provide a special mention to, to those uh, in the room today with a special shout out to Annie Billawara Lee, <laughs> uh, who's, who's uh, receiving a, a wonderful recognition today. Uh, Mr. Samuel Bush Benazi, again, uh, are two leaders in our communities, two pioneers who have broken the mold, who've broken stereotypes to break through, you know, what is possible so that others can come behind them. Others can follow them as trailblazers, as leaders of our communities to see what is possible, to dream big. So I just wanted to, to begin by making those special acknowledgements and thank um, CDU for, for being wonderful partners of the Larrakia and providing the institution, the opportunity, the pathways in, because education is going to be the key. It's, it's going to be the game changer for generations to come. And you probably heard it before, but I think about uh, the quote from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And to be able to have an institute like Charles Darwin University on Larrakia country, providing an opportunity to learn, to grow, to thrive, and to change generations is absolutely amazing. It's incredible. And I can't, I can't wait to see what Larrakia Nation and Charles Darwin University can do together. We've had a long-standing MOU, and I know we're uh, in, the, in the stages of, of working out to refresh that and update that, and we're really excited to, to partner with such a wonderful institution. But back to the welcome to country, sorry. <laughs> um, I would also like to begin by um, acknowledging my fellow Larrakia within the room today. Uh, also, our, our other brother, uh, Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters in the room today, acknowledge your journey, your ancestors um, who, who have brought you here today um, to, to reside on beautiful Larrakia country. My name is Jerome Kibillo. I'm the chairperson of Larrakia Nation Corporation, uh, and I'm excited to be here with you on this momentous day to welcome you onto Larrakia country. Larrakia Nation is the cultural authority that represents the Larrakia people here in Darwin, in the, in the Greater Darwin region. We represent the Larrakia people in our, in our recently uh, updated strategic plan, puts us front and, set, front and center, Larrakia first. For us, it's about changing the tide, creating opportunities for Larrakia people on Larrakia country, through the nation, to be able to, to get jobs, but we're also thinking about our future and our role that we can play in this community. We do a lot to care for a lot of our most vulnerable and making sure that they're safe as they pass through Larrakia country and are kept safe. But for us, it's about the future and how we can start to play a greater role to support more Larrakia people going to wonderful institutions like Charles Darwin University and changing their future through tertiary education. The Larrakia people are made up of five fam nine family groups here that covers the Greater Darwin region and across to the Cox Peninsula. We have been leaders and advocates on our, on our country and on our community for all Aboriginal people. Last year we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Larrakia petition that was calling for, for treaty for all Aboriginal people around Australia. The Larrakia petition travelled our nation, garnered over a few thousand signatures that came back to Darwin that was going to be presented to Princess Margaret just across the road at Government House. Sorry, I'm pointing the wrong way. Um, and that, that cry still carries today. We still take that message of our ancestors, all the leaders um, that went before us, to one day to see that come to fruition. But the unique thing about that treaty, it wasn't just for us, but it was for all our mobs and how we can, we can create a brighter future for generations to come to have that self-determination uh, to, to live on our country, to govern our own affairs, and, and be the voice that our mob need us to be. I want to also give a special um, shout out. Uh, I did mention her, but Ani Billawarili, you know, the work you're doing as a part of Larrakia to help us revitalize our culture our language. You are absolutely critical and integral in us revitalizing Larrakia language. We're going to have a beautiful Larrakia cultural center 
facility built across the road here that's going to be uh, nation leading when, when the cruise liners step off and they're going to see this beautiful building here. But the work you're leading through your own studies that you've gone and undertaken to help us reclaim our language, reclaim our culture, so that the next generations coming through will be able to speak Larrakia language. To know Larrakia culture is absolutely fundamental and critical. The work you've done as elder, um, elder on, on campus with CDU and, and, and the tireless and, and you know, voice and advocacy that you've done is painting a brighter future for our mob. So, Ani Billawarili, thank you for the work you've done and congratulations on this uh, wonderful recognition today. Um, you are one of those giants uh, that, of shoulders that we stand on, so thank you. Um, I'd also like to um, close by acknowledging once again all of the graduates today, the hard work, the tears um, that went um, to get you where you are today. Um, you know, I was just talking to a friend who was saying uh, his, his partner, his wife's here, um, who's graduating today, and did that whilst, uh, you know, raising a, a young one, you know. Um, having been, you know, fortunate enough to also get a tertiary degree, there are a lot of uh, late nights, there are a lot of uh, tears, um, and a lot of hissy fits on the phone to mum. But to be here in this moment, sharing it with your family and your friends, is absolutely wonderful. So thank you once again for the opportunity to be here to provide this um, welcome to country. Thank you for choosing Darwin, Larrakia country, and CDU to undertake this absolutely life-changing uh, moment through, through graduating. And I can't wait to see uh, the continued relationship that we get to build with CDU and more opportunities for all of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Territorians and those who choose to come and call beautiful Larrakia country home. Thank you, and again, congratulations. Uh, thank you, Jerome, for that warm welcome to country. I now invite the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman AO, to deliver the welcome address. That's not good, is it? That's not good. The Vice-Chancellor really likes to be encouraged to come to the stage. Uh, so if you could perhaps, you know, uh, give him a bit of applause. So um, invite the Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman, to deliver the welcome address. If you think I'm a diva, wait until you get to the Chancellor. Welcome, everyone. It is just fantastic to see you here today at this graduation ceremony. And can I start by thanking uh, you for that wonderful uh, welcome to beautiful Larrakia country. It is just the most beautiful country in the world. And it's a privilege that our university is on your land. So thank you very much for that welcome. In fact, the Chancellor and I were walking uh, over uh, to the graduation this morning and I, I, I looked at her and said, you know, where, this has got to be the best place to live in the world. Why would you live anywhere else in the world? And then we both looked at each other and said, October. <laughs> so it is wonderful to be here. And this is a graduation. It is a celebration. We're here to celebrate the success of these incredible people over here. So make some noise, don't be shy, shout out. If they've got some embarrassing nickname from when they were a baby, shout that out. This is a chance to really celebrate success. This is much more like a wedding than it is a funeral. We're here to celebrate. Uh, a couple of things we need to do, and sorry, I, uh, my colleagues have heard me say this so many times, but there are some uh, formalities uh, that we have to have for people to be able to graduate. Uh, we do need a mobile phone to go off halfway through the ceremony. And when that phone goes off, we've all, all got to look at that person in a very disapproving way and scowl. We've got to have one of you, one of the graduates, to fall over as you go across the stage. And the more spectacular, the better. If you could do a somersault, a couple of flips, that would be really good. And the most important one, we do need uh, a baby to make some noise, to really cry. 
So if by the end of the ceremony we haven't heard a baby cry, can someone pinch a baby quite hard? But on a serious note, if you have got children with you and they start making a bit of noise, don't worry about it. Please don't think it... Thank you. (laughs) Please don't feel that you... Don't be embarrassed and you have to leave the room. We're all in here. This is a family event. Don't worry if the kids make a bit of noise. Uh, In fact, my very good friend, Auntie Billawara Lee, who's going to do the occasional uh, address, I think you should really get your kids making a lot of noise when she's speaking. I also just want to uh, acknowledge Auntie B, who will soon be Dr. B, uh, and say uh, what an incredible colleague she is, and it's wonderful that the university is recognising you in this way today. Have an absolutely fantastic time, uh, and you lot, don't forget to thank this lot. Thank you. Uh, Good morning all. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. And now for the presentation of the honorary awards as awarded by the CDU Council. I have the honour to present Professor David Price to you. In recognition of their outstanding uh, contributions, Council has determined that David be appointed an uh, Emeritus Professor of the University. Chancellor, When David Price retired as Professor of International Law in July last year, he brought to a close a university career of more than 50 years that has encompassed uh, both its academic and management components across four continents. He holds degrees in law as well as in international relations, uh, industrial history and Chinese. His particular perspective throughout his long career has been international, having worked, consulted and researched in institutions in Australia, the United Kingdom, Germany, Indonesia, and the Middle East. His primary research work has been upon the intersection of international intellectual property law, public international law, and the international trade agreements. This has extended to international trade dispute settlement. He has published extensively in these these areas, focusing upon the Arabian Gulf states, Indonesia, and ASEAN. And, the Australia, uh, and Australia and established a strong reputation and developed valuable strategic research networks. His groundbreaking book of uh, almost um, two decades ago, entitled Infidels at the Gates, Intellectual Property Legal Regimes in the Arabian Gulf States, is still considered a leading authority on the development of intellectual property laws and their enforcement in the Gulf region. Professor Price came to Darwin in early Uh, 1989 to be the Foundation University Registrar when the Northern Territory University was established. He has spent more than 30 years in different capacities in the halls of Northern Territory University and then Charles Darwin University, helping to increase the international reputation of the university and its research. As part of that commitment, he was held visiting professorships uh, in, in Indonesia and China. Despite now being retired, he continues to research and publish internationally, as well as supervise CDU Law postgraduate research students. He remains a member of the editorial board of the Sultan Qaboos University, I may have mispronunciated that, um, University Law Faculty in the Sultanate of Oman, a board member of the International Indonesia Foundation and the Northern Territory Division of the Australian Indonesia Business Council. Chancellor, in recognition of his work on the intersection of intellectual property law, public international law and the international trade agreements, Charles Darwin University Council awards Professor Price with the title of Emeritus Professor.
Thank you, Professor. I now have the honour to present Samuel Bush Biani, uh, Bianasi uh, to you. In recognition of their outstanding contributions, Council has determined that Samuel should be awarded the Honorary Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Mr. Bush Bianasi is a resident of the uh, Wugala or Beswick community in the Catherine region and a proud Yongu man through his mother, grandfather and grandmother whose country is the Blue Mud Bay region in East Arnhem. He is the current chair of the Northern Land Council. Mr. Bush Bianasi is also 2023 Australian of the Year for the Northern Territory. I think that, that's very good. For over three decades, Mr. Bush Bianasi has been an active member of the NLC, Northern Land Council, serving nine terms, including three terms as Deputy Chair. He is currently serving his fourth consecutive term as NLC Chair of the 78 elected members comprising the full council. Mr. Bush Bianasi has extensive board and committee experience. In 2022, he was appointed co-chair of the interim board to establish the Northern Territory Aboriginal Investment Corporation. He is a long-serving board member of the North Australian Indigenous Land and Sea Management Alliance, a member of the Aboriginal Housing Northern Territory Aboriginal Corporation, and a member of the governing group of the Aboriginal Peak Organisations Northern Territory. Over his career, Mr Bush Bianasi has represented and promoted the interests of more than 51,000 Aboriginal people across the top end in areas such as public policy and law, education, health and business. He was the driving force of historic changes to the Aboriginal Land Rights Northern Territory Act passed by the Australian Parliament in December 2022, the most significant reform since the Act's commencement in 1976. Follow, following the historic Blue Mud Bay High Court decision in 2008, Mr Bush Bianasi secured the authority of traditional owners across the Northern Land Council region, the Tiwi Land Council region, and in Deliaqua Land Council in March 22 uh, to uh, establish the Aboriginal Sea Company, an innovation in Aboriginal economic development and self-determination. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Mr Bush Bianasi was responsible for pushing the Northern Territory and Commonwealth governments to introduce biosecurity zones across the Northern Territory, a successful initiative that definitely saved lives, slowing the spread of the virus and giving more time for Aboriginal people in remote communities to be vaccinated. Mr Bush Bianasi has always supported the primacy of the interests of traditional owners, traditional law and ceremony, caring for country and two-way learning for young people. Mr Bush Bianasi was instrumental in establishing the Northern Land Council's Community Planning and Development Program, which supports self-determination for communities, investing in their own future and in the NLC's continued operation of the highly successful Learning on Country Program. In recognition of his outstanding efforts to uh, the empowerment of Aboriginal people across the Northern Territory and nationally, Charles Darwin University Council awards Mr. Bush Bianasi the title of Honorary Doctor of Letters. Thank you. I now have the honour to present Auntie Billawara Lee to you. In recognition of their outstanding contributions, Council has determined that Aunty Billawara, uh, Aunty Billawara Lee should be awarded the Honorary Doctor of Letters, Honoris Corsa. <laughs> Aunty Billawara Lee, a senior elder from the Larrakia Nation, the traditional custodians of the Greater Darwin Region, is currently the Larrakia Academic in Residence at Charles Darwin University. Aunty Billawara advises on Larrakia cultural practices and protocols and provides culturally informed guidance, direction and support to CDU's students and staff. Previously, Aunty Billawara was a nurse at Royal Darwin Hospital before spending 20 years working at the University of Canberra 
where she managed the Nun uh, Nunawal Centre, which is uh, Aboriginal Student Support Centre. It was during this time that Auntie uh, Billawarra completed a Bachelor of Applied Science in Cultural Heritage. Auntie Billawarra also provides her cultural knowledge and expertise at other organisations, including Northern Territory Government and the Menzies School of Health Research, where she led the development of the Indigenous Staff Network to improve the representation of Indigenous staff. For 15 years, Aunty Billawarra has chaired the Menzies Child Health Division's First Nations Advisory Committee and is the current chair of the Minister of Health, Health Advisory Committee and sits on the NT Clinical Senate. Aunty Billawarra is an accomplished author, having published two novels, Star Dreaming and Healing from the Dilly Bag, and 10 books in Larrakia language and English for Northern Territory schools. Her cultural expertise has been recognised on the podcast series Ask the Specialist, which was embedded into NT Health, Top End Big Rivers and East Arnhem cultural awareness programs. In recognition of her outstanding contribution to the improvement of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health and education, as well as her cultural knowledge and experience, Charles Darwin University Council a role, uh, awards Ani Billawarra Lee the title of Honorary Doctor of Letters and our occasional speaker today. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Lady Lord Mayor, Durham Lead Mabachiwa. Good day, everyone. I am really honoured to be asked to do the occasional address today. Firstly, on behalf of my fellow graduates, graduates today, the CDU students, I want to thank the university and the academic and support staff who made our academic journey so much easier. Thank you for your patience, your kindness and your willingness to share your wisdoms with us. We are very proud to be members of the CDU family. I'd like to share a very short version of my life and at the age of 73, it will be a very condensed version. I was born in Darwin in July 1950 and I am the eldest of 11 children I've been blessed with seven brothers and three sisters and a very huge extended family. I am a member of the Cabillo family. I'm blessed with three children and nine grandchildren. Growing up, my family lived at Parap Camp, now known as Stuart Park. My family lived in a Sydney William hut, a 60 by 20 cement floored, corrugated iron walled and roof dwelling with shutters and windows we pushed open and held open by a stick. We had exposed metal struts to hold up the room and the wooden partitions to, se to separate our rooms and we had a lot of double-decker bunks. We didn't have electricity, so we used kerosene lamps and cooked on a wood stove. It was my job to make the wood chips to start the fire. Mum washed our clothes with a washing board, scrubbing brush and a lump of soap and we used a wood burn copper for bigger, dirtier items. Our wash clothes were hung on a rope tied from tree to tree with wooden pegs. I used to get into trouble because I'd pinch the pegs to make little dolls. We would also use the big copper to clean our geese in before we plucked them. Our toilet was a flaming fury pit toilet in the backyard, but we were fortunate to have running water. I did my first years of schooling at the Holy Spirit School. When I was a child, it was mandatory that all Aboriginal kids had to go to the Catholic school. It was not a happy experience for me. Sadly, a couple of the nuns were a bit cruel to the coloured kids. I attended Darwin High School the year it opened in 1956. 
And even there, as a young Aboriginal girl, I was sent to classes such as sewing, drawing, shorthand and typing. I didn't get the choice to do any of the sciences. I think if I'd have had been given a choice, I would have studied to be a doctor. But in those days, it just wasn't possible. My one really big joy at Darwin High School was being able to access the library. I was, and still am, an avid reader, and now I'm an internationally published author. After the 1967 referendum, I became a citizen of Australia when I was 17. My fellow graduates, I would like to share some tips with you that were given to me by my grandmothers, fa mother, father, and many highly respected elders. This advice has helped me on my life journey. And I'm really very happy to pass this information on to you now that you will be starting on your professional life journey. I hope it helps. Be kind to yourself and others. Develop and maintain a good work, life, play balance. Be respectful to yourself and to others. Be more of a listener than a talker. At all times, have the highest level of ethical and moral behaviour, such as be punctual, reliable, trustworthy, hardworking and honest. Always assume that you are being watched, both physically, spiritually and technologi technologically. No matter where you are, don't think that you can be one way at work and another way at home, at play or online. I always presume, I always resume, assume I am being judged, you know, but without letting it stress me, stress, stressing out about it. Don't put your life out there for all to see on social media. Knowledge is power and the more knowledge you give others about yourself, the more power they have over you. I am on Facebook and Instagram, but I don't do that Twitter or bloggy thingy. I think I'm just too old. I only put good news and heartwarming notices on social media. I admit I tend to watch what others are up to. I might be old, but I believe that social media can be an agent for destruction and chaos, if not used in the right way. I know for a fact that many employers will check someone's social media platforms before considering to employ them. No matter what happens in your life, don't jump to conclusions. Always try to see a situation from the other person's point of view. You just don't know what's happening in their life. Be willing to ask gentle questions if you don't understand what's going on or why someone is behaving in a strange way. And be willing to be supportive. Don't engage in gossip, especially negative, vicious gossip. This is lateral violence. I have a mantra. My business is my business. Your business is your business and everyone else's business is none of your business. Again, show respect. Not everyone lives by the same social and cultural rules. Have a high standard of dress. Be modest. No bum cracks. Midriff rolls hanging out. Don't um, show too much cleavage. Don't wear sheer clothing or clothing so short that when you bend over everyone can see what you had for breakfast. And I can tell you, particularly if you want to work in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, they are very, very conscious of those rules. Again, you know, it's about respect. Don't wear thongs to work. It gives the impression that you're lazy and you don't have any consideration for your colleagues. People who wear thongs at work will often take them off and walk around barefooted. And if you have a foot problem, you can spread this to other people's via the floor or carpet on your bare feet. Really, it's yucky and unhygienic. And if you're asked to do something at work that just isn't in your role description, don't say no. You know, that it's above your pay grade or it's not in your job description. I know I do this, so I'm telling you. Your boss may be testing your ability to work at a higher level and to see if you're ready for a promotion. Try to be willing to work above and beyond your role. Stretch and test yourself. Make sure you are not taken, but make sure that you're not taken advantage of. 
People notice when you're willing to make an extra effort and will be willing to put you forward for an acting role in a higher position. It has always worked for me. Always demonstrate a curiosity and flexibility. Be innovative. Please don't use foul language, well, any time, I'm old, but especially in the workplace. There will be times when you must work with someone you really don't like. Oh, yes, I understand that. You will have to go beyond your feelings and work professionally. You don't have to be their friend. You just have to be an effective member of the team and get the job done. However, you don't have to take abuse or bullying treatment from colleagues or even supervisors. There are procedures to keep you safe from this, but you must be brave and step forward and make a complaint. Just don't whinge about it to others. From my spiritual teachings and personal experience, there is no such as thing there is no such thing as coincidence. Things happen for a reason. I have found that when something happens that upsets me, I just sit quietly for a while and then I will eventually find out why the particular situation has happened. And it's usually the ancestors moving the pieces around on the board and making life better for you. And I have learned over many years, it's not what you know, but who you know that will often resolve a situation or give you solutions to a problem. So build up and maintain your networks, but don't practice nepotism. And for those of you that don't know what that is, is if you are in a position of influence and power, that you don't give all the jobs to your family or friends, because you will be found out and it'll be really bad. Establish and maintain a network of supporters or mentors and be willing to support and mentor young ones coming behind you. Don't just do a job just for income. Good money's nice, but it's not the end of everything. Strive for a job that you love doing, that you are happy to get up and go to each day with people you care about. Sometimes it's not just about how much income you make. You know, when you do something you love, you can make a difference in the world. Take care of yourself, mind, body and spirit and keep your culture and spirituality strong. Keep your family and friends close and be a positive, productive member of your community. All my life I have volunteered in my community in different sectors and I live with the mantra, what you give out comes back threefold. And this is true for both positive and negative energies. Vice Chancellor and Chancellor, with your permission, I would like to do a blessing for everyone here today. I call on the spirits of our ancestors, the earth ancestors, with a blessing support of Mother Earth, Mother Nature, Grandmother Moon and Grandfather Sun for the following. May the sun bring you all new energy all day. May the moon softly restore us by night. May the rain wash away our worries and may the breeze blow new strength into our being. In all the days of our lives, may we walk gently through the world and know its beauty. May everyone be safe and happy, and may our hearts be filled with joy. May we all live in peace and security, and may we all live in perfect tranquility. I ask the spirit of my ancestors to support, guide, and protect you all, and help us all grow strong together, ensuring that the love and friendship we share here today is everlasting. May we walk together in harmony, and may our pathways always be smooth. Thank you for listening to me today, and I hope my tips will help, particularly the graduates, on your life journey, and I really wish you all the best for the future. Milama Damra, be well. Mamak Bachua, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Billawara Lee, for the very practical advice and a very generous blessing. Um, I would like to present to you these uh, uh, flowers as a token of our uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, as a token of our appreciation. I think Annie B always takes my words away from me when she speaks. That was um, amazing. Now, for a musical performance. Today's musical presentation will be Feeling Good by Michael Bublé, performed by Jemima Fernandez. 
Jemima is a multi-instrumentalist and singer, often performing in Darwin for community events, gala balls and fundraisers. Jemima studied at CDU and participated in many of the university's initiatives during her studies, including as student ambassador and student council representative. Jemima is not only a performer today, but she's also graduating with a Bachelor of Laws. Please give Jemima a warm welcome. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Reeds drifting on by. You know how I feel It's a new dawn It's a new day It's a new life For me And I'm feeling Good I Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free, you know how I feel. Blossom on a tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Dragonfly out in the sun You know what I mean, don't you know? Butterflies all having fun You know what I mean Sleep in peace when day is done That's what I mean And the old world is a new world And a bold world for me Graduates, are you feeling good? Stars, when you shine, you know how I feel. Scent of the pine. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life, it's a new dawn, it's a I'm feeling good, I feel so Wow, um, Jemima, thank you so much for that. It was wonderful, and we're definitely feeling good. Incredible. I would like to now welcome Jaden Courtney McGregor, who was highly recommended by the Faculty of Arts and Society, and will speak to you today on behalf of our graduates. Just going to lift this up a bit, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jemima, for that. That was an amazing performance. All right. Hello, Her Worship, the Mayor of Palmerston, Miss Athena Pascoe-Bell, fellow graduates, aspiring students, 
Vice-Chancellor and respected guests, family and friends, and to all the students graduating today, my name is Jade McGregor and I'll be presenting the student ceremony speech. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we stand here today, the Larrakia people, and give my respects to elders past, present and future. I'd also like to acknowledge my family's country in WA, the Ninganya people, and the lands and ancestry of everyone here today, no matter how far in the world that may be. I'd like to start by proposing two words, if you could keep these in your mind throughout my speech. Those two words being perspective and resilience. A university degree was never something I saw myself achieving in life while growing up, and it is no stretch to say that each one of us has had a very different journey leading us here today as a graduate from Charles Darwin University. Some experiences during your degrees, whether that be battling through the tight deadline of your mathematics assignments with the equations stretching 10 pages long, or conducting your first hospital placement as a nursing student and thinking, wow, the lecturer really wasn't joking about the chaos in here. Or being a social sciences student and grappling your head around the philosophical thinker who best described ethics. From a personal experience, I can say that that one never ends. Though these might seem like minor parts of your time at university, they all add up together to influence your growing perspective and engagement with everything in your life. Some of you may have started university in one degree and be standing here today graduating with a completely different degree. An honourable example of how university builds both resilience and perspective. I'd love for this entire speech to be orientated around happiness and success, but as many of us have probably found throughout our short or long journeys at university, that isn't always the case. So I'll be a little corny here, and just like the movies, I'll start with some bad news and then finish off with the good news. We're embarking on a new stage in our lives, and unfortunately, that means a ton of potential thorns and roadblocks lay ahead. We're only humans, we're animals after all. So life may tend to throw at us some obstacles that seem all too mighty and tough for us to conquer. So something I learnt during my time at university was to have a place, a thing, or a connection that helped me feel safe and relaxed when things got too much. For me, that's being by the water. If at any time at university I felt I was struggling, I'd go down and sit at Nycliffe Foreshore, listen to the water, the animals, the trees in the wind, and just take it all in. So if there's something I can leave you with here today, it's to make sure that you each have that particular thing so that when the time is needed, it takes no effort to calm your nerves or bring up your confidence. I'll continue with the good news too. It's not just luck that has brought you here today, but all of your efforts and determination as well. You've graduated from university. Throughout our different degrees, there is one thing that we all have in common. We have built the ability to not just recite our degree, but trust in our own skills to research and discover solutions that exist outside of our comfort zones. The journey we are now embarking on, yes, the learning experience free. With compassion and encouragement from staff members around the campus and the open minds and conversations from my lecturers and course coordinators. I felt truly believed in. My mentors have helped me so, see something inside of me that previously I had struggled to see. So leaving here today, I hope that both you and I can have the same positive impact as future mentors, either at our workplaces, within the community, between our family and friends, or especially even back at CDU, encouraging the next generation of students coming through. Thank you. Thank you, Jaden, for representing our graduates today. Please accept these flowers as a token of our appreciation. I now invite the Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman, to commence the conferring of awards.
Would all graduands please stand? And doctorates. And doctorates. Graduates. Okay. Yeah, you can stand. Chancellor. As Vice Chancellor of Charles Darwin University, I submit to you candidates for the awards as set out in this official list of graduands. I certify that those listed have satisfied the requirements for the award of those degrees, diplomas and certificates. I hereby admit to their respective awards the candidates whose names appear in the official list of graduands. Congratulations, well done. Family and friends, our graduates. Will all graduates please take your seats. I now call upon the Pro Vice Chancellor and CEO of CDU TAFE, Mike Hamilton, to present graduates. Thank you. Uh, Chancellor, in my capacity as Pro Vice Chancellor, I present to you graduates from the Faculty of Arts and Society and CDU TAFE. For the awards of Certificate 2 in Retail Services, Flynn Burke. <laughs> For Certificate 2 in Workplace Skills, Amy Vigen. And a quick disclaimer, I apologise if I accidentally mispronounce people's name. I mean no disrespect and I do appreciate those students, um, graduands here today that um, have provided the phonetics for their names and it just speaks volume to the magnificent diversity that we have in our student base and our graduands here today. Um, in Certificate 3 in Accounts Administration, Azel Jira Aysen. In Certificate 3 in Business, Mihail Nicholas. Eden Lucero. And thanks for all of the cheers from the audience. People are watching this from all around the world. We have such a, a diverse um, student base from uh, all over the world. So, um, Karen Tapala. <laughs> in the Certificate 4 in Accounting and Bookkeeping and Certificate 3 in Accounts Administration, Francisca Catalina Soto Ramos. For the qualification of Certificate 4 in Business, Alison Alba. <laughs> Stephanie Christine Klee. Chantal Michelle Clarenbeek. <laughs> and Jackie Sesselman. Oh, sorry. Jamaranis. Jamaranis. For the Diploma of Business Studies, we have Hyen Lee. B. 
Benita Sharma. For the qualification of Diploma of Event Management, Tiffany Bell Brown. For the qualification of Diploma of Health, we have Menas Sultana. For the Diploma of Hospitality and Manage uh, Hospitality Management, Jem Vis. <laughs> Taylor Leong. Kia Mago Piok. <laughs> Emily Wai Song Chiang. For Diploma of Leadership and Management, Mary Cunningham. <laughs> Diploma of Leadership and Management and Diploma of Business and Certificate for in Business, wow. Um, Bjorn Magabo. For the Diploma of Yongnu Studies, Rabuna Mick. Yongnu. For the uh, Bachelor of Accounting, Dana Savana Ang. Aniket Dolia. <laughs> Karan Butler. <laughs> Abro Sh Shakat. Sorry, mate. Chitakra. <laughs> Nina Danoy. <laughs> Mayuri Fernando. Pratiksha Gurung. <laughs> Wang Nook Kwan An. Manoka Guba Kila <laughs> Wang Ni Lam <laughs> P 
Pratik Kumar, Damesh Bai, Mahant. Taran Mongia. Thi Wan Jung Pham. Prakyat Paya. John Suililia <laughs> Al Naim Sultan <laughs> Kriti Thaparana. Ming Li Zong For the Bachelor of Accounting and Diploma of Laws, Sevasti Diamandopoulos. For the Bachelor of Arts, um, and the first uh, graduate, uh, graduate is in the language and linguistics is Deborah Clarissa Ballangari. <laughs> Keith Godfrey. Jaden Courtney McGregor. <laughs> Mitchell Stacy Martos Rabi. For Bachelor of Business, Bridget Anna Bidner. <laughs> Rainbark Quintus. Chelsea Ann Fairgrave. Andrew Hughes Morris. Calliope Sfungaristos. Kayla Alice Slack. <laughs> Soak my throat.
Patricia Dominique Pindot. Shreya Vijayan. For Bachelor of Human uh, Humanitarian Aid and Development, Alice Mulba. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Humanitarian and Community Studies, Sarita Dungo. Dinesh Paria. Layla Salman. Thank you, Layla. Heather Mary Anderson. <laughs> Zoe Therese Bolton. Sikari Butler. James Carstensen. Garjanesh. Chundron. <laughs> TJ Damo. <laughs> AJ Emmanuel. Zaid Ferran. <laughs> Jemima Fernandez. <laughs> Cherie Gaffney. Richard Paul Gardner. <laughs> Kobe Adriel Yavia. <laughs> Alexandra Grace King. Craig Led Anusha Mahendran
Rhys James Miller. <laughs> Chu Ann Newman. Emmanuel Okumu. <laughs> Piper Ray Belling. <laughs> Stephen Rainey. Diane Lachmi Singh. <laughs> Samantha Ann Spencer. <laughs> Harvey Stiller Wojkowski. Wen Han Son. Harrison Sweet. Samantha Wilson. Helen Haritos. <laughs> sorry, and that was for the Graduate Certificate of Arts. I missed the heading, sorry. Um, for Master of Arts, Adam Edward Olsinski. For Masters of Arts by Research, Stefan and Ciso. <laughs> Martha Finn. For Masters of Business Administration Professional Practice, Dumika Gamaj. <laughs> Nayan Mondo. Diksha Rolt. <laughs> For Master of Business by Research, Anita Rijal. For, for Master of Emergency and Disaster Management, Hannah McKinnony. <laughs> for Master of Professional Accounting, Professional Practice, Susmita Shalis.
Maema Thurdus. Yeah. Samiksha uh, Gamia. Jaya Giri. We Jean Zhu. Nasnin Jahan Ismath. Rupinda Koa. We Mui Kwok. Na Li. Yen Jung Liu. Lam Nat Tian Nguyen. Thi Li Thu Nguyen. Chan Min Nguyen. Min Tong Tan. <laughs> Zen Wei Sha. <laughs> Aisha Sidiqua. Habiba Sultana. <laughs> Kanishka Wirakon. <laughs> Pasquelj. Dong Lahiru Sunath Wikrama Singh. <laughs> Shan Yang. <laughs> Sung Lung Yang. Minzu <laughs> Master of Public Policy, um, Susan Edwards. <laughs> Ra
Renee Long. Daniel Adam Short presentation for the Faculty of Arts and Society and CDU TAFE. I now call upon Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation, Professor Steve Rogers, to present their CDU doctoral graduates. I'll just put this up a bit. I think there's been quite a short person here. <laughs> <laughs> Chancellor. A Doctor of Philosophy, or PhD, is the highest postgraduate qualification level that can be awarded in academic study. A PhD involves in-depth, focused research conducted over an extended period of between three and five years, or in the case of part-time studies, up to ten years. This research outcomes, presented as a thesis or as a series of Journal articles are assessed by a panel of national and international academic experts who determine whether the research delivers an original and significant contribution to knowledge in the particular field of study. The candidates graduating today have met these incredibly demanding criteria. Now, it's my pleasure to announce that today we're going to commence a new tradition uh, with our PhD awards. So boomerangs are indicative of the knowledge that has existed among First Nations Australians for tens of thousands of years. Much knowledge is applied to making boomerangs. What wood to use, where to find this wood, how to prepare the wood. Boomerangs are used to hunt food for fighting, for ceremonial purposes, and to make music. This knowledge has been transmitted through the generations and is part of the traditional knowledge systems and, dare I say, science of First Nations people. And these knowledge systems remain strong across the Northern Territory and Northern Australia to this day. Charles Doring Darwin University honours and respects this knowledge. In honour of this knowledge, we Christine Tarbert Buckley. <clears throat> For their thesis titled Reading the Making and Doing of Australian Heritage as Careful Cosmopolitics. As supervised by Professor Helen Veran, I now present to you Dr. Christine Tarbot Buckley. Chancellor, I present to you James Thurmer. For their thesis titled New Techniques for Measuring and Analyzing Population Movements, Understanding Population Attraction, Retention and Loss in Australia's Northern Territory, as supervised by Associate Professor Andrew Taylor, I now present to you Dr. James Thurmer.
of emerging market multinational enterprises operating in overseas markets, a study of Chinese multinational enterprises as supervised by Dr. Susan Bandias, I now present to you Dr. Jinhua Zhang. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of the doctoral candidates. I now call upon the Chancellor to deliver the charge to graduates. Graduates, please stand. As newly conferred graduates of Charles Darwin University, it is at this stage in proceedings that we conduct a turning of the tassel ceremony. This is a long-standing university tradition that officially symbolizes your transition from graduand to graduate of Charles Darwin University. Please now move your tassel from the right side of your mortarboard to the left. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and by the application of your abilities to support and nurture the communities that you are part of, there's your phone. <laughs> I charge you to take with you the spirit and resilience of the territory. Walk softly but proudly in the knowledge of your profession. May your achievements bring honor to CDU, your chosen profession, and to yourself. Good luck. I think the piece that's a little bit missing is that you haven't really clapped these people. So will you stand and applaud? Your family, your friends, the people who've supported you throughout this journey. If all graduates could please now take your seats in preparation for your guard of honor and the closing of this ceremony. Every new day begins with a choice. The choice to make time for what really matters. To use every opportunity to work toward our goals. And to make every day count. Once we committed, we knew it was possible. Today is a time to celebrate and reflect on what we achieved. It wasn't always easy. We had our doubts, and the juggle seemed impossible. The early mornings and the late nights, when the inspiration was not there, the search for perfection. We just wanted to get it right. But for every challenge faced, 
we always had the end in sight. We found our inner strength and determination. We found support along the way. We used perseverance and passion to reach our potential and to find our new world. It all comes down to this moment. A feeling that will live with us forever. To share with the ones who've inspired us. To become the person we were meant to be. Graduates, distinguished guests, families and friends, the procession will now prepare to form a guard of honour for our newest graduates. The Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor then invite you to join them in the foyer for refreshments. Please now stand with the procession and remain standing until the graduates have left the room.